Welcome to the PLT podcast, Olivia Atwood, everybody. Thanks for having me. This is so exciting. I'm really introduced it like we've got a big audience, but it's literally and just like, us. silence. <laughs> I know, I was expecting like a clap from somebody, but no, that's just from me and you. How have you been? You look amazing, by the way. Thank you. I'm really good. I'm good. Life's busy, yeah. which is I'm grateful for because, you know... All the all things going on, I feel grateful to be busy, but yeah, it's good. That's it, it's a pretty strange year, like 2020. It's been mad for everybody, but it yeah. has been really busy for you. You've had a wedding to plan. <laughs> How has that been? Tell me about the wedding. I feel like all I do is talk about this wedding, like I'm making myself <laughs> sick with it. Um, like everyone, we were kind of right in the midst of wedding planning before lockdown happened, and then obviously everything stopped. Mm -hmm. We were gonna get married abroad. We're now gonna get married in the UK, just purely for the facts that I hate the idea of having a venue that I couldn't visit throughout the year yeah. because of restrictions. So yeah, we found a UK venue, we love it. And we're sort of making our way through the plans. Oh my God. I'm excited, but it's one of those things, it's like we've agreed, we've got to get to like the other side of Christmas to know whether it's actually going to be feasible to pull off what we want to pull off. Right, okay. Just to see what happens restriction wise. But if things hopefully lift, then obviously we're, we're good to go next year. So have you actually set a date or can you yeah. still on? You've set a date? set a date. Oh my God, how exciting. I guess we can't know that just yet. Is it a surprise? I feel like it's too soon to say it because yeah. because of everything that's going on right now, I feel, I feel like I don't want to jinx it. Do you know what I mean? It's like, it's June, but it's, yeah, I won't give the exact date. I don't know why I'm being <gasps> weird about it. Yeah. June, no, I get I yeah, completely no. get that. That's it's so soon, exciting. it's going to fly around. Like, it's mad, isn't how it? How exciting. But as well as a wedding, a wedding, you've also got your brand new TV show, Olivia Meets Her Match, which I mean, how exciting. You've literally been so busy. <laughs> and I really want to get into that a little bit later on. But yeah. first of all, I kind of want to just rewind and mm. take it back to like the very beginning. Yeah. So obviously you didn't start off on Towie. So no. I want to go back to like before Love Island. Like what was life like before going into the villa? You were a track girl, is that mm -hmm. right? Is that the right term, track girl? Track girl, grid girl. Grid girl, yeah, that's the term. Whatever. People <laughs> call it all kinds of things, yeah. Um, so that was, yeah, that's what, what I was doing. That was my main sort of day job pre Love Island. Uh, but in modeling part-time with that, but I signed with like Monster Energy, The Drink, and I was one of their like monster girls we were called. And we, yeah, we traveled the world with MotoGP, like F1, like uh, motocross, and that's what I did. Um, and I loved it. It was so much fun. Like we traveled the world, I have stories to tell the grandkids, like, you know, never ending stories. <laughs> and it was amazing. And. <laughs> I was kind of right in the midst of that and I got approached on Instagram for Love Island series two and I'd never watched series one. Oh, so really? yes, yeah, so I'd never watched it. Cause like, I mean, now I watch series one and I think it's like one of my favorite series, <laughs> yeah. but I'd never watched it. So I was like, oh, what is Love Island asking people? Cause it wasn't so big, was it? Like no, no, back no. then. And anyway, I ended up turning it down because I was like, I love what I'm doing. I know I won't be able to go back to working with these brands mm. post Love Island. Cause I just, never imagined obviously that it was gonna take off the way it did. Yeah. Um, and then yeah, said no, carried on as I was. And then series three came round and I was like, no, I should have done this. So I called them back up and I was like, any chance you'd want me for series three? And they were like, you're the girl that disappeared like final, <laughs> final doors, like literally like boarding a plane. You were like, yeah, no. And I was like, yeah, that's me. And they were like, let me speak to some of the execs and I'll call you back. And they call me back and they're like, well, if you leave in two weeks, you can come. I left two oh weeks later God. and I did a two week lockdown in Mallorca for going into the villa, it just happened like that. I didn't quite realize that like, so obviously they'd approached you for season two, mm. but then you eventually went into season three. Yeah. Wow, I know. that's crazy. Not many people know it. No, I feel like I've never read that anyway. You've surprised mm. me, but as well, something you mentioned there was, you know, you have stories to tell the grandkids from being a grid girl. <gasps> so let's pretend I'm a grandkid right now. What stories are you gonna tell me, Olivia? <laughs> I mean, I've, I'd have to be really careful how what, <laughs> what I say here because I'm thinking of like any NDAs I signed or any people, okay, but yeah. I mean like, you know, partying with, you know, all kinds of famous people and wow. you know, like, you know, all over the world, like just amazing things that experiences traveling with my friends, just like things that were kind of like surreal, like, you know, like being, you know, on, the track at you know MotoGP and guitar and like meeting like you know the is it the president whatever you know what I mean the, yeah, the king yeah. and just like things that were like wow is this really happening it was just amazing it was an amazing time yeah do you think in any way then it prepared you for what you're about to embark on how I'm professional she's a busy Sorry, girl guys. it's absolutely fine <laughs> I thought it was on silent <laughs> um 
I think from being from a modeling background mm. and doing the grid girl stuff, it was all obviously you're held to like impeccably high standards of yeah. like physical appearance and like the way you hold yourself and being tough and having a face on, you know, mm. it doesn't matter if you are feeling a bit miserable one day, you've got to come and you've got to smile and yeah, you've got yeah. to be entertaining, charismatic. And I think that definitely has helped me for this part of my life. I really agree. Like you say, like mm. no matter how you're feeling that day, you've got to get up and go. You've yeah. got to put your smile on. And I guess that's kind of yeah. what you really have to do in reality TV. But I mean, it was a journey, love, and you got thrown into the spotlight at 26 years old. Is that right? Yeah, I think around that, yeah. Did you like ever think about the stardom that would follow before you went onto the show? No, not at all. And it's like, it, it's crazy because I even talked to some of like the guys I was in my series with, like Kem and Amber mm. and stuff. It's like, when we were in the villa, so obviously now you've got some standout characters from series two, like Alex and Olivia, people yeah. that are still around, but they've almost like kind of, it's almost they've got bigger as the years have gone mm -hmm. on. It's like when we went in, people were doing really well off series two, but it still wasn't to the levels that it is now, yeah, if no, that makes sense. Agree. I remember we was in the villa, we'd have chats and everyone would be like, oh, what do you want to do after? And I would, I'd be like, oh, I just want to do a few PAs. Like our like aspirations and what we thought would happen afterwards were so small mm. compared to what it was. So we were not prepared at all. Like I will remember that day landing in Stansted with the fans and the crowds when we came off the plane for the rest of my life. because we were all in shock. Like no wow. one expected that mm. at all. So it's crazy. And I don't actually think the show itself were prepared for how big series yeah, three yeah. went. Cause I remember it was, God, it was like maybe two days before the final, we had like this big meeting and someone from like one of the execs came down or whatever. And they basically, and someone from press and they basically said to us like, we don't know how to kind of word it, but the show's blown up. Like people are having Love Island, like final parties, like there's the cinemas of like yeah. showing the final, like, and we're all like, while we've been in this bubble and we're sort of like in this own little world, we're going, okay, like, <laughs> why, we just kind of thought they were having us on a little bit. Yeah. Like, we're like, okay, like whatever. But yeah, nothing prepares you for when you come out, what it was like. It's so weird. Cause I actually, on the flip side, remember these parties. I remember being, <laughs> I was probably, I think I was at one for yours. You hosted. You, I think I remember, <laughs> yeah, we were probably hosting one. PLT was probably hosting one, but it's so crazy to hear the two different like perspectives mm. of it. And like thinking back to that moment when you get off that plane at Stansted, just take me back to, that moment, like if you could describe it now, how would you describe it? I think um, like it was scary. Cause again, we hadn't um, been around, we hadn't seen other humans mm. apart from each other yeah. for like 10 weeks. Um, we were obviously sort of take, you know, you get a bit institutionalized, is that the word? Like when you're kind yeah, of yeah, in yeah. this villa and you've got this routine and then you, you kind of take and it's like the night before we was all lying in bed, we was all a bit like, do I want to leave? Like I feel like we live here now, like. That's your world. Yeah, it was just really strange. And then we sort of, we, we came through like the baggage reclaim all that. And it was like, we were going towards like, when you come out the, those sort of doors when yeah, you leave the yeah. airport. And we tried to leave like maybe six times they had to keep taking us back because they were trying to control like the crowds of oh people that were trying to, every time we got to the door, it was like this swarm of like the noise and like they would like pull us back. And it was so hard because like we could like literally see our families obviously, which haven't seen mm. them for so long and we could see them. And then it was like, we're back again. It's like torture for them. Like, cause obviously they were like, we were so close, but yet so far. And it, it took us like, a good like 45 minutes to physically get out the door. And then obviously we got into the sort of, you know, where you meet your family and friends in the airport that bit through the sliding doors and it was just mayhem. Mm. And it it was a, that was a quite a hard moment. Like it was a, an amazing moment, but it was hard because mm. all we wanted to do was like be with our families yeah, and yeah, yeah. talk to them. And, but mm. there was just too much going on. Like I, I remember I couldn't even kind of get like to my mum and dad without people kind of coming in, like trying to take pictures. And we had security, each of us. And in the end, it just got too crazy. I think we were there for like 15 minutes and they just oh. pulled us all out. And then before we knew it, it was on this like bus or coach and we were like, is that it? Like we generally we just, but it's because it was just getting too crazy. And they were trying to obviously like for our own safety and everything. And then we went wow. to a hotel in London and our families met us there. And that was more great, like more calm because obviously they had control over mm. it. But yeah, it was mad. And do you think like in that moment you knew like life's changed forever? Maybe it hadn't sunk in. I don't think it actually really sank in for like a good couple of weeks. I think we was all, we sat on this coach that like, was all like kind of like in silence, like, 
what the actual hell mm. like the realization that everything that you've been doing for the last 10 weeks it sounds really stupid because like you're on tv obviously everyone's watching but it's like the penny like kind of drops yeah, you know yeah. like people coming up to me going oh my god i loved it when you and chris said blah blah and i'm like oh my god, shit like yeah you were watching that like it's so <laughs> it was so crazy definitely and i think as well you know going into a show like that what kind of made you want to go on the show in the first place? Because obviously now your fiance mm. that you're with now, Bradley, you'd been with him yeah. beforehand, but what kind of like spurred you to go, you know what, I'm gonna give him a call back and I'm gonna go on Yeah, it. so it's kind of like a long story, but I'll try and give you the oh, not so long we're version. Here, we're here for the long story, <laughs> babes, I'm ready for it. So <laughs> with the series two where I turned it down, it was it was because I loved what I was doing, but I was also seeing a guy who I thought was great, like every guy I dated. <laughs> so it was partly, partly, at the time I probably didn't admit it to myself, I partly turned down series two because I was with this guy and I thought, oh, this is amazing. Mm. No, I'm not gonna go and like leave things with him. Didn't work out, you know, it, it was shit, he cheated. It was just one of those things. Then life moved on, then I met Brad and then we was dating and it was just, like there's there's not actually anyone to like who's fully at fault to be fair and I'm looking back on it in my mm. mind when I went to Love Island I was like he is fully at fault but <laughs> we were kind of I was traveling a lot he was younger and you know like playing football and you know just being Jack the Lad and so he mm. wasn't faithful I probably wasn't entirely faithful we were just kind of we were giving each other the run around basically yeah. for like all for, god quite a few months and then when I kind of decided oh I want more then he was like giving me the run around it was yeah we sort of took it in turns and then I it got to a point where I can't I can't remember the exact trigger but he did something where I felt like he'd crossed the line mm. and I just had this moment where I sat like in a hotel I was somewhere abroad with the grid girl job I think I was somewhere random at Germany I sat in a hotel and I'd got this call with him and I'd heard something he'd done and I was like oh my god I was like I'm just literally like another guy that I've just kind of fallen into mm. this this pattern and I'm I missed out on like a really amazing opportunity for a guy do you know what I mean and um I'm trying to think how it played out because there was a situation where they rang me for series three like maybe like a few weeks before I right. got a call and I'd said I said no because, yeah, this is it. I'm trying to remember it right. I said no because of Brad. Then I was sitting in this hotel room and found out this thing he'd done. Yeah, this is how it went. And the penny <laughs> dropped and I was like, what the hell? Yeah. What the hell am I actually doing? Like, this is insane. And also I was thinking, I was going in a bit of a weird stage with the like, uh, what I was doing for a job. Cause I was like, I said getting older, but it's like, you know, that job you can't do forever. There yeah. is like, there is expiry date on it. Yeah, yeah. I was partying a lot. It, my life had no structure. I was here that I was living out of a bag. And I just thought this could be a really exciting way to just like hit the reset button. Yeah, so yeah, definitely. I called them and I said, so it's me that didn't want to do series two and also told you <laughs> no three weeks ago, would you see me? And then, yeah, they wow. basically gave me like a two week turnaround. And it was pretty mad because I was like, I spoke to my mum and I said, what do I do? Well, obviously Brad and I was split. And I said, do I need to tell him? I don't feel like I owe him anything. And she was like, look, I know you hate him right now, but mm. I think tell him, I think it's the right thing to do. So um, I don't know if I've actually told anyone this before. So this is a full exclusive. So I told him, I said, this is what's happening. And he was like, he was just silent, silent on the phone. And I was like, you didn't want to commit, you did whatever. Mm. So this is what it is. Anyway, I had, I flew back from Germany. I literally had like a few days to pack. My best friend was coming to my house and she was helping me pack. And it was that like I was leaving, I was getting picked up by a chaperone from the show five in the morning. And I actually packed through the night. He turned up at my flat at midnight, the night before I left. Yeah turn out my flat he's like he had obviously he's gonna hate this obviously he'd been like crying he'd, yeah. he'd had like a penny drop moment and he like was like like oh, we were arguing with me like to to not go mm. he's like don't go don't go i mm. promise like i will i'll prove i'll prove i'll do everything and i was like i said no i said it's too late because if i don't go i'm gonna resent you for not doing this mm. and if yeah. i don't go as well don't think you ever really respect me because you've always had mm. your own way always and i feel like you need to not have your own way this time yeah. and you've crossed the line and I want to do it. It's fucking hard though. And look where you are now though. That, like, I, I, I never obviously knew that story, but like, look where you guys are now. Like, and I think it's that story of if something's meant to be, it'll always find a kind of a way. Ultimately. And I think so many, there was so, there's been so much gossip and like conspiracy around the mm. whole thing. Like, oh, you know, you always intended to get back with Brad. I think mm. that's a really easy thing for people to say. Yes, it is, yeah. 
I would honestly need like an Oscar nomination if all of that was just like in the big plan. Like, do you know what I mean? Like it, that was it. I was fully done. And I ne- no part of me thought I was going back there, especially when I came out and I was like riding high, like yeah, exactly. life was great. I was like, as if I'm going back to the guy that like, you know, you know, sort of screwed me around the first time, mm-hmm. like everything was great. Even though things didn't work with Chris, at all I definitely in my mind it was not like okay well now it's back to Brad like that happened Mm. very look authentically and like organically Mm. and yeah like you say I think it's one of those things ultimately it's and so many girls message me you know when they talk about you know boyfriend problems and stuff and I just I really do believe that thing if it's meant to be it will Mm. be you just gotta like ride it out Mm. and ultimately we would not be where we are now if all that hadn't happened and we he knows that I know that he knows ultimately if I hadn't gone he probably wouldn't have the respect for me he has Mm. now I wouldn't have had a chance to kind of I grew up a lot through Love Island I learned a lot about myself and he also grew up in that time so when we come back together it's like we're the same people but not because we've evolved so much as like humans do you know what I mean that's it giving yourself each other that like kind of space to grow yeah and to learn like on your own because I guess if you've been going through like the times with each other like you say like arguing you know being unfaithful whatever it is yeah you're kind of going back and forth and in roundabouts for a while but going off to have that time on your own to learn exactly what you want in life is such a huge thing and do you think that you kind of did get that from Love Island did you have a clear idea of okay this is what I want now when you came out of Love Island I think I just Oh, it's a hard one, isn't it? Like Love mm. Island was kind of like a like a big wake up call for me in quite a lot of ways. Mm. I think what I found from doing Love Island weirdly, because it's like ultimately you think it would have the opposite effect. I think that I realised that <sighs> previous to that, I'd always used all my relationships and the men in my life as a crutch. Mm. So I felt beautiful when they told me I was beautiful. I thought I was funny if they told me I was funny. Yeah. And I think what Love Island taught me is that I don't need someone else to tell me that. Mm. Like, I just need to like myself and be confident in who I am. And that's enough. And even though I was on, you know, on Love Island, as you can see, I was so unfiltered and like, Mm. I just was unapologetically myself for the first time, I think in ages in a weird way, because you think being on national TV, like you'd have the opposite effect. (laughs) But weirdly, like I just kind of, we're in that villa with no outside influence. Like, do you know what I mean? I had no one to kind of like guide me or tell me, don't yeah. do that, don't say that, you know, not having an ex, you know, ex-boyfriend to shush you or don't say, don't say. Mm, I just was mm. like a law unto myself and sometimes to my own detriment, <laughs> but it was quite like a therapeutic experience. And then I got to watch it back and be like, oh shit, okay. Maybe I am a little bit, I'm holding on some anger, I'm holding on to some other stuff. And it kind of, yeah, that's like taught me a lot about myself. Mm. But it's good that you were true to yourself. Like, you know, like you said, you were unapolog- unapologetically, that's a big word. Yes, that. it is, isn't it? Unapologetically <laughs> you. And I think obviously that's why you've grown such a huge fan base and why people love you so much is because that's who you are and you're real. I get, And I think that is a huge thing these days for people, especially when they look up to somebody, mm. when, you know, they like somebody on TV or whether it be on Instagram or whatever, they want people to be real and people that they can connect and relate to. Like we 100%. all get angry, we all whatever, yeah. you know, so it makes you relatable. And I think it's even harder, it's getting harder, even like the four years I've been in this industry, it's getting mm. harder as time goes on because it's like the public and online, they mm. demand real, oh, they God, want yeah. real, but then you're not you allowed to be a flawed human. Yeah. So it's like, they go, oh, I hate that influencer. She pretends to be perfect, mm. rah, rah. But as soon as you bring down the perfect, they're gonna just go for you. Like in yeah. those like weak spots and be like, well, you you spoke wrong, you you shouted, you did, but you want real. So it's really hard. Cause it's like mm. mentally, I see how people end up falling into that trap of becoming this like, you know, zombie sort of like trying to please everyone. Mm. Cause you kind of feel like you have to. And I, that's what, I'm always trying to hold on to so much, like, cause like you say, the, the people that have followed me since Love Island support me, I want to always feel like I'm giving them an authentic insight. Like I am a flawed person, that's okay. But what's important is like, when you screw it up, just mm. own it, mm. but it's tough. And I want to talk a bit more about like the press and kind of like the online world. But before we do, so I've read something really interesting recently. Mm. Um, now I may be wrong. I may be wrong. I'm, I'm not. I haven't fact checked this myself. But apparently, um, Love Island are thinking about possibly pre-recording the next series of Love Island okay. to give contestants more time to adapt to like celebrity life. What do you think of that? Well, so like it would be recorded. So it'd then be they'd... pre-recorded, mm. and basically they'll be out of the villa when it's on. Okay. So you'd you'd be at home watching yourself back, okay. and you'd be what? But then 
with that, you'd mm. be seeing the tweets, the comments, if you yeah. wanted to, of course, you would see everything in real time. You know, a lot of what we went on in our series is like the fact that we were unaware. And if I had been aware of what was going on outside, obviously like it's human nature to maybe then change the way you're behaving. Mm. I almost feel like being innocent to all that was going on, I'm glad. Cause it was like, I know what there was times the love and I got like so much hate, but obviously, mm. unfortunately, you know, the, the people that then receive it, obviously your family, your friends, they see it, it's horrible for them, but I was unaware. Yeah. And then when I came out very quickly, when I got hold of my social media and stuff and I could show like, you know, the other side to me and people got to know me, everyone softened. So right. I think, I think, yeah, I don't know, it's hard, but it's like Towie goes out yeah. and then we read the live interaction as it goes. Mm. And that's quite tough. I don't, I don't know, you know. Now, Love Island does receive a lot of criticism. Mm. Obviously, being such a huge show as it is, that kind of has come along with it. And I know tragedy has been attached to the show. Mm. But I read it had a really different impact on you. Yeah. What did you mean when you said that Love Island saved your life? I think, ultimately, for me, that where I was at as, like, in my life before Love Island, I don't think I realised it so much when I was actually physically in the moment. But mm. looking back, I was in a bit of a a spiral of like you know de like sort of serial dating like guys that were just wrong mm. and then partying so much like and i think the job i was doing it didn't because they had no structure no routine i'd sort of and the the one side of it the beauty of it that i loved was traveling the world and all the parties yeah. and the you know like being here and then being there but then ultimately after a few years that can take its toll catch up with you yeah catch up with you 100 percent. like I, I didn't like you know know my ass from my head most days of the week <laughs> and i was living out of a bag and like i say too much partying mm. i i hit like a it was pre-love island it was at the end of a relationship I had before I met Brad and I hit like a really bad period of like sort of I say I was depressed but mm. it ultimately was like really like really chronic anxiety that kind of pushed me into like a bit of a depression and I think then I, I dealt with it I got help I sort of picked myself back up and mm. then I went back to work but I think underneath it was kind of like still bubbling away mm. and yeah just, Love Island was like a reset for me like it just kind of it gave me a load of opportunities and a load of things and things to look forward to and just a whole change of a life really mm -hmm. so yeah that's kind of it sounds dramatic when you say it like that but that's kind of yeah what I meant really but I guess that that's like you say you know all that was kind of going in your life your life sounds a little mm. bit hectic crazy oh, yeah so I guess although it's one kind of one crazy to another yeah. it is kind of a pause button because it's like okay let's shut off that side of my life for a little bit and mm -hmm. let's go into something new and 100%. kind of find yourself a new way I think I sort of I kind of, in a weird way, I kind of found this like, r respect for myself is the wrong word, but I kind mm. of thought like, oh shit, like I am, I am other things than just like a girl that's like got big boobs and like can look good for a job. Mm. Like I kind of like, you know, when I, I obviously got criticism on Love Island, but also mm. there was a lot of love and that yeah. gave me like this sense of like self-worth that I hadn't had for a long time. And also I went through, I think the reason I fell into modeling and doing the grid girl stuff like through school and, Apart from, I guess, drama a little bit, I always kind of thought like, everyone's like this thing they're good at. Like everyone's yeah. like this thing that they love doing. And I haven't got this thing. I always think, why haven't I got this thing? Like, what's wrong with me? Like, and years are going by and I mm. liked what I was doing, but it's like, I kind of fell into it because it fitted f for me, but it wasn't like setting my soul on fire sort of thing. And yeah. when I did Love Island and when I came out and I started doing all these jobs around TV, I thought, oh, I love doing this. I love making TV. And people were saying to me, you know, in like the production side, like you're good at this, like yeah. you are good. And they were saying, look, we see so many people doing it and you're actually, you're decent at it. And I was thinking, really, am I just saying that? And then I thought, okay, I've got, I found a thing now. Like finally I found yeah, my thing. Yeah. And it's like, I think people say like, you know, I'm like, people are gonna watch this and be like, oh, shut up. But <laughs> honestly, it's like, when people say like, you know, reality stars have no talent or like, you know, that's, there's no skill to that, mm. just do it. Just do it for like a couple of weeks. And there's a lot more to it, I think, than people realize. Oh, completely. So yeah. And that's the thing, I think sometimes that like, obviously when you are growing up, going through like the teenage years or, or like in your twenties, it's mm. such a pressure to be like, what is my thing? Yeah. So many people have that pressure and sometimes it just takes a little something for you yeah. to stumble across what that is. Cause we don't all know straight away. 100%. And like in reverse to 
Love Anne saving you. Yeah. Many people have said that you've saved Tawi. <laughs> so let's talk about that. Like you've gone from Love Anne to Tawi. Tell me about that. Do you agree with that statement? I mean, I couldn't. That'd be so obnoxious if I <laughs> if I commented on that. Like, <laughs> yeah, I saved it. Yeah, I saved the show, everyone. God. <laughs> um, no, I mean the show. God, it's been you know what ten ten yeah, years now. Yeah. Like, do you know what I mean? The show doesn't need saving. It's it's thriving, but. Mm-hmm. I definitely, I think I probably gave it a little something. Do you know what I mean? That was always my intent. <laughs> um, obviously, I'm, you know, I'm taking a break from the show now while yeah. I film my own show. But yeah, it, it was just a good fit. Like they, it was in conversation right out the doors of Love Island because obviously I've got ties to Essex, got all my friends there and everything. And I love the show. It, it's it's good fun. There's good days and bad days. Do you know what I mean? It's like, it's quite, it's a big cast. Like it, there's a lot of, you know, energy on set. Like yeah. everyone wants to be the alpha, everyone wants to be the alpha female, everyone wants to be the alpha male, everyone wants to be top dog, everyone wants to be the sassiest. So it's it's full on. Like mm. you sleep well after a day filming Tawi, like it's tiring. Um but yeah, it's been good. It's been a laugh. So you've enjoyed the experience. Yeah, for sure. I think you've definitely had some ups and downs. What's been like your kind of favourite experience from it though? My favourite, I'd probably say like I mean, there was negative press attached to this trip as well, but we did a Marbella trip, like the standard Howie Marbella trip. But that was like, that was so much fun. Like I was, you know, Mm -hmm. we were my best friends and we just, we laughed every day. It was just amazing. I think the hardest thing for me, it's weird because everyone says, oh, is Love Island fake? Mm. I can't talk for anyone else's series, but obviously my experience on Love Island was very much, they just let us run with it and they followed. Whereas, Towie is reality, but yeah. I think it's like semi-structured reality. Is that the what kind of way to word it? Mm-hmm. And that I think took me a little while to adjust because mm. also it's such a big cast. You could you know have a moment, have a scene that you know you could be there for like three hours doing this, like having this conversation. Yeah. With them. But obviously, because they've got to tell all these stories, they can only show five that minutes. Clip, yeah. And it's up to them what five minutes they show. So I think that for me almost like when I did it and then watching the episode, I was like, oh, that was a bit like, I was a bit naive to thinking my story is going get, to get told every single week. Cause it's like, well, no, it's not. Cause they've mm. got to tell everyone's story. Do you know mm. what I mean? So that was a little bit of a wake up call for me. I, can ima- I couldn't imagine actually sitting and watching something back to back. Cause I feel like you would just pick yourself to pieces, wouldn't you? Pick yourself to pieces. And it's hard because it's like, I say it's like you watch a scene and then it cuts and then you'd be thinking, oh no, no, more happens. <laughs> more. Right, it's a <laughs> Not so the end the producers of like, this is not what I did. <laughs> That's what I'm doing. They're like, Liv, we, we can't take these calls from you 11 o'clock at night. I'm like, you left out the best bit. <laughs> Fuck, I like I think that's interesting what you said, like with a cast like that, I guess that everybody involved in a show like that is probably like confident, mm. loud, bubbly people. So mm. I guess everyone is kind of yeah. wanting their stories to be told. A hundred percent. And then I think, you know, I feel like Love Islanders in general, I feel like most everyone that's been on the show will feel a little bit we come with this like I don't know, it's, it's almost like a bit of baggage. It's like, I feel like people either love it or they hate it. So either yeah. sometimes it opens doors for you because everyone's like, you know, some brands and some shows are like, Love mm. Island, yes, let's book her. Yeah. And others are like, no, hate it. So, so there's quite a contrast there. Mm. And then I think it goes the same with like peers in our industry. It's like, some are like, oh my God, yes, like Liv's joining the show, she'd be great for the show. And others are like, you know, have been doing Towie for like 10 years. Mm. And they think, well, who's this kid? She's been on one show and thinks she's like big time. Do you know what I mean? Then they meet <laughs> you with like hostility so it's quite like interesting mm. to see the different reactions for people definitely. and it definitely was split it was definitely like half were like really, really gassed and half were like <laughs> it looked like I've like pissed in their coffee when I turned up <laughs> I was like I'm not pleased to see me now <laughs> and how do you like cope with that like do you change yourself at all or are you just not bothered when no, like, like that that's you. the thing. I think that's the like confidence that I've mm. kind of like grown since Love Island over the last couple of years. I think that it's always kind of been there. Like, you know, the, like the, this is the thing, the modeling grid girl world is savage. Like, yeah, yeah. Do you know what I mean? Like the girls are competitive. They all want to be top dog. Like I've kind of got a bit of, like immune to that, I think from what I did in the past. Mm. That's good. And I think it's taken it then back again to what that all, like how it all kind of prepared you to what yeah. you're doing. Cause I mean, in both in, well, in every single show we see you and you are, known for being fiercely confident. <laughs> and I mean, you're always someone that's spoken your mind. And I think, like I said before, that is why people love you so much. That is why, you know, you've got such a strong following and fan base. Do you think you've always been that confident person? No, it's crazy. No, like my mum, well, she, uh, we filmed like episode one of my show that went out. We touched on it briefly. I was chatting to my mum at a dinner 
and she was talking about what I was like when I was younger. It's really strange. Like, so out of my siblings, when I was younger, I was like the one that was, you know, holding onto my mum's trousers, wow. like standing behind her, would always cry on the first day of school. Like, you know, like summer camps and things like that. Like mm. I would refuse to get out of the car. My sister was who's younger than me, just get out and stroll off. Like I was very, um, it wasn't, it wasn't even like lack of confidence. Because once I got in front of people that I knew, I was confident, it was like, I was nervous mm. and I was a very like anxious child for not really any particular reason, just like my genetic makeup. My mum is like really confident, really fierce, like proper alpha female. And I always looked to her to be like, I wanna be more like her, but I couldn't kind of like, I, it took me a long way into my teens to kind of find mm. that. She definitely helped me. Like I wanted to sort of, you know, when I was even like the age of like sort of like, 12, 13, 14, I would be like, you know, like in a restaurant or something, if I yeah. wanted something, I'd be like, mom, like I want blind. And she'd be like, no, you asked for it. And I'd be like, no, you asked for it. <laughs> or like, if my food is wrong, I'd be like, I don't like this. She'd be like, well, you, you say it. Like try and push me yeah. to like find my voice. And then I found found it. And she was like, what have I fucking done? What have I done? <laughs> and she can't oh, go back then. She was like, I've created a monster. But yeah, so it was a journey. And I think I, you know, always try, it's hard to articulate, always try and mm. say this to like, especially the girls that, you know, message me and guys on Instagram. Mm. When I do Q and A's, one of the most common mm. questions that comes up is how are you so confident? How do you just, you know, not give a shit what people think? And I'm yeah. like, don't put pressure on yourself because that's a journey. Like I'm like nearly a 30 year old woman and it's this is how long it's taken me to mm. get to this place of like confidence and like stillness. Like it's taken me ages to get to like, this is who I am, Yeah, take it or leave it. Yeah, and that's why I guess you're in such a good place now. With, yeah. You know, yourself, your life, your career and with Bradley. I know. And I just think he, it, yeah, like you say, it's been like a journey. It's like who I am now is mm. not who I was when yeah. me and him dated before, the first yeah. time round. And that's, and he's not the same person either. And also, you know, it's ultimately as well, realizing how many, you know, guys I dated that were wrong. Mm. You kind of get into a habit thinking it's normal for people to want you to be a little bit different, but actually it's not really like, yeah. unless you're like kind of making issues in your own relationship or life, if you're not hurting anyone, you, no one should be asking you to change. And it's like, that's the thing with Brad, he's never mm. asked me to change. He's never like tried to like dim me down or like shush me or be like, you know, I don't like this, I don't wear that. He's mm. never like, one, his personality is very laid back, which compliments me. Like yeah. we are like complete yin and yang. But I think he's just, he's the right person for me. And I think that's, you know, before I was always trying to, you know, whoever I was with at the time trying to force, oh, they're the right person for mm. me, I'll make it work. Mm. And if they're not happy, I'll, I'll change, make them happy. And that's like quite like a, can be quite a toxic cycle. For sure, for sure. And I think, you know, as well, like when obviously as you grow up and as you find mm. yourself, you learn yeah. these things. So it's good for people to know, because I mean, if people are listening that might be going through a similar situation, it might even just click in them like, yeah, maybe my relationship isn't right or whatever 100%. that may be, you know, we all kind of go through it. And I mean, something else that, I know you speak really openly about is your kind of depression and anxiety. Mm. And I know that you still speak about that on social media, but yeah. like we said before, we see this really confident and bubbly Olivia. Mm. So sometimes I think maybe your followers or your fans might find it hard to believe yeah. that you kind of do suffer from yeah. depression and anxiety. Is that something that you are still kind of battling with on a day to day? I think when, I think everyone's journey is different. I think when the way for me, it's been something that was really severe when it first, or it, at first I had my first panic attack in school when I was around 13. Mm. And it was so severe that for about a year, I was back and forth to hospital because they thought, it's so crazy, they thought I might have like epilepsy or some oh, kind of God. thing where like I, or in an epileptic family where like maybe I mm. was, it was a type of fainting because I was having the panic attacks and then I was kind of going really glossy eyed and disorientated and you know sweating and shaking. It was such a physical reaction to the mm. anxiety that I think the doctors, and I think now, you know, what, how many years later are we? Mental health research is mm. much more advanced. And like now it's like a doctor might, you know, go into a GP and they'll go, that is a classic panic yeah. attack. But whereas back then I think it was a bit more like, mm, th those symptoms, the sweating, it sounds a bit too severe to be anxiety, but it, it ultimately it was, but it mm. took a long time for them to be like, and the right doctor to be like, no, that is that is a classic, really mm. severe, but a classic panic attack. So they started, like I say, when I was around 12, 13, which is quite young. Yeah, really young. Um, 
And like I say, my family life was you know, nothing traumatic going at home. It was mm. quite stable. Basically what I say is like, it, it comes and goes. What I have to respect is that it's always there. Yeah. It's underneath the surface. And yeah. I have to know that if I kind of respect it and look after myself in the way that I know manages it, then mm. I can keep it at bay. But then as soon as I like forget to look after myself and I create like a bit of a perfect storm. Mm. So I wrote on my social media the other day, I'd had a really yeah. bad panic attack. And it was like, looking back to that the other night, I walked myself into that. Like I was all day frantic, didn't take two minutes. I was things that I should have, I should have taken 10 minutes in the afternoon, just put my mm. phone in airplane mode and just like breathe for a second. I didn't eat my dinner because I was stressing. I was lying in bed 10 o'clock at night, writing emails, editing Instagram and stuff. Like just like mm. overload and Brad was going to say, put your phone down. And I was like, I can't, I can't. I was like, I have to do it, I have to. But actually then when your body is like, no, mm. gives you a proper you. wake up call. Yeah. The next day you think, yeah, I thought, getting that piece of content ready for Instagram was the most important thing. Mm. Actually, your health is so much more important, mm. but it's really easy, isn't it? To get blindsided mm. and think, oh, just just one more thing, just one more thing. But it's remembering to just be like, no, mm. it's late now. I shouldn't be on my phone yeah. in bed. Do you know what I mean? And that was the night of when, we're going to go into it in a minute, but when Olivia meets a match first aired, wasn't it? Was it was that like two days, two days later. Right, okay. yeah. So, so it's I kind think, of in the midst of all the craziness. Yeah, and I think maybe because like ultimately as well, like even though it's like a positive adrenaline, I think I was yeah. probably running on adrenaline, so pleased and so happy with the, mm. res like, the response to the show. It was amazing. I was literally, like, I think maybe I was running on adrenaline for like two days mm. and I think even though it was like happy adrenaline, also with that, I think it just caught up with me and I was mm. a bit like, and obviously it's been busy and it's just something that I'm just, you know, my personality and my genetic makeup, like I'm susceptible to it mm. and I just have to know that. And I think, you know, I've spoken quite a lot recently about like ADHD and my diagnosis yeah. there and that, you know, typical ADHD sort of, you know, behaviors and symptoms is like a computer that's got all the tabs open mm, yeah. and you have to, consciously close some tabs otherwise the computer's going to crash and that's that's the way a doctor described it to me once and i was like that mm. is the best way to describe it because that is ultimately what yeah. happens yeah but that's the thing with like since love and you've been in the limelight constantly and you know you've kind of gone from one you know one project to the next to the next and you've yeah. moved, like, everything has moved so quick so how have you actually managed day to day to close those tabs down to go okay no olivia like mm. in it's kind of like having the stars in your eyes, everything's going on. How yeah. do you actually think, no, I've got to think of my health, I've got to think of me and, you know, take them steps that you've got to take to make yourself, yeah. you know, feel good. It's it's really hard and I definitely struggle to find the balance for sure. But I think mm. when I'm thinking, like when I'm thinking correctly about it, it's like, so exercise, always try to make sure exercise like a few times a week because that, for me is like a really uh like therapeutic you know, gives you the endorphins and whatever yeah, you call yeah. them so that i think you know just like a bit of like where i can like having a routine sort of like a like a steady bedtime and getting up time make sure i keep mm. that quite like steady and then th just little things like when it's like my like i'm gonna have my lunch like if i go back after this the flat and eat lunch just put my phone off eat yeah, my lunch having that just time. have 10 minutes and then rather than eating with one hand and scrolling on the like that just it's about just kind of like talk, like catching myself as mm. I do things. Yeah. But it is easier said than done. Cause like the world we live in is like, there's no escape. So it's like, you're constantly expected to be available and contactable mm. 24 seven, but it's, it, you need to not be sometimes. Yeah. But obviously with the fame comes a lot of people's opinions. Mm. And I know that's something you've openly spoken about mm. as well. And I know that even recently you've said like the comments, negative comments in particular are out of control. Yeah. In general with yeah. celebrities and with, you know, people in the public eye. Yeah. How have you like coped with dealing with that negativity? It's a hard one, you know, like, I think there's one part of me I want to say like I've become quite immune to it which mm. I think I definitely have mm. and I sometimes you might it's my sister the other day pulled me up on it because she said she was reading some comments on something and she was like are you okay she's like did you see these comments on blah and I'm like uh, yeah I was like I'm fine she was like mm. like to other people it's almost like wild I think how much people become we become desensitized to it yeah. like it's hard when it's off the back of TV stuff because what you want people to do, right, when they watch reality TV is go in there with like a pinch of salt. Yeah. It's semi-constructive, like for example, Tally, sem semi-constructive reality. There's so much more to each situation than you know. So mm. like you would love like people to bear that in mind. Yeah. And also like it is an entertainment show. There's nothing going on in these shows that is that dark. And yeah. you know, we're all playing 
kind of like roles in a sense like yeah. we're all in on the joke like that you're so angry but we're not angry like no yeah. one who, who, there's been an argument on Tawi. yeah and on twitter they're so angry but i'm not angry she's not angry like we're just it's, we're just we've gone to work you know no one's gone home and took it home with them and it's like it's that's hard because you people are i think projecting their own issues and their own unhappiness yeah. i think at the moment where people are especially it's a shit time people are mm. out of work you know everything going with corona like people are more unhappy than usual so like they're they're venting more on that i found that more on instagram and twitter mm. than they would be previously everyone's looking to kind of pick a hole in something to like release a bit yeah. of anger you know but it's not right is it i mean it like it's such a hard topic and i think like even in these podcasts and the, what we do with plt mm. these kind of conversations it always comes up because it is unfortunately just a part of celebrities lives yeah um and i mean i read your post about like some of the things that people have said about you mm. and i mean it's horrific yeah but what do you think is like the worst thing that's ever been said to you on <sighs> social media by a troll um it's like it's, it's dark even say it out loud it's like my lost my granddad uh, a few months ago now well, no less less than that a month or two ago and then a towie episode aired like two days later than him pass of him passing, and someone DM me again. It's the scary thing off a mm -hmm. goat had no account. It had no picture, no followers. It was, it was a purpose made account. They messaged saying just watch Tawi. Um, your the, the reason your granddad's dead is because karma, because the way you speak or something insane like that. But do you know what more? It freaked me out because obviously I was like, oh, I have to read that. I've just lost my granddad to read mm. that. But more what actually freaks me out is like there's actually people going around in our world mm. who actually. Well, I say they think like that, but this is the thing where I think some of the campaigns, I know Bobby's doing one, I know mm -hmm. Vass is doing one, where you you should have to provide an ID to create yeah, an Instagram 100%. because the person who sent that knows that what they've sent is wrong. That's yeah. why they've done it from a ghost account. If mm -hmm. they thought what they were saying was okay, they would send it from their own account. Mm -hmm. And it's like, so I've had to read that, how disgusting and how mm -hmm. insane that is. And I just more makes me just think, I can deal right now where in my life I can deal I can I can know I can look at that message and think that has come from someone who is so immensely troubled mm. and broken themselves yeah, yeah. but it what makes me really mad is that message to someone else could just be the one thing that's just like a little bit too much exactly. and I think that people say but you you go on your love island and, and tell me and you scream and shout and you give insults and arguments I'm like yes but these are situations one that are like heightened for entertainment and yeah. this is like a situation people have entered into we know each other wearing disagreement it doesn't mm. mean you have the right to then watch and then send me abuse mm. Of what the back of you you've seen, you can say you didn't like it or whatever, but it's like mm. you don't get the right to. So I hope you die or whatever off the back of some TV show or some Instagram post you don't like. Mm. It's it's crazy. It is it is wild to think that somebody can sit there and can have these comments. And like you mm. said, like you're such a strong person, and I hope that in that time you were obviously going yeah. through, uh, you know an upsetting period in your life mm. that, you know, you don't want that to be amplified by some stranger, like you say, with no profile picture, yeah. no, that aren't gonna be held accountable sending you these messages, it's just so uncalled for. But I mean, you are a confident and clearly a strong woman. And I know that on the best of days, they won't affect you. Obviously some mm. days they might do, but what kind of tips and like advice would you give to anyone who maybe feels low on confidence? I think for people that are struggling and feeling low, it's like, you need to, it's a journey, but it's like finding a way of like liking yourself. Cause mm. until you like yourself, yeah. it doesn't matter how many people like you or dislike you because you're always gonna be struggling with that. And I think it's, you know, a journey of, it's really hard to put down to like a specific thing, but like yeah. looking after yourself, putting yourself first, whether that's through like healthy eating, like exercise, making yourself feel good, yeah. having good people around you. And you know, if someone's making you feel bad or you're questioning who you are or you, you don't like someone makes you feel like you don't like yourself then you need to cut people out mm. and re and remove toxic drains from your life mm. but it is easier said than done fast forward to the positive i mean <laughs> i appreciate you like sharing all of that with us and just you know going through that yeah, i course. really do appreciate it but let's go to the positive you've got your brand new tv show olivia meets her match which honestly <laughs> i'm obsessed with like i am actually obsessed with it the first episode aired the other evening and it's all about you moving to manchester and planning yeah. your wedding with bradley so the first question what do you actually think of manchester are you a fan I love, I feel like a broken record now. I love <laughs> Manchester. I love it. Like, I, it's so crazy for me and Brad, both from, like, I'm from Southwest, he's from South London. And like, we, 
we're both like two southerners, uh, southerners up here. Like, are we yeah. ever gonna feel at home? <laughs> and I can't believe how quickly we did. Like, it just is a great city. Mm-hmm. Like, it is. I always say it to everyone. Like, it's fun. It's like the energy's good. People are warm, and it's like the city itself. It's like it's big enough, but it's not like too big. Like yeah. London, it's like there's like a cosmopolitan whole lifestyle there, and there's like you know like the down to earth side. It's great. Like, it's got everything. I love. I love it. And what's like what's been your favorite like experience? Have you got like a favorite place to go or a favorite new Mancunian saying, mate? Have you picked up any lingo? I kept saying our kid, but apparently I was saying it wrong. So I've stopped saying it now because I was embarrassed. Why are you saying it wrong? Is it not our kid? I thought it meant like, no, because I thought it meant like, oh, that's all right. But it doesn't. Oh. It means like someone's. It's someone's like cousin. Our kid, yeah, yeah. Like, oh, like our kid, Olivia. Was so it when pop, I like... said it a couple of times, Brad was like, "You aren't saying that in the right context." I was like, "Am I not?" And he was like, "I promise you, you're not." I was like, "I can't remember what I said." Um, so yeah, but we we love all the sort of like the the same spots as everyone else. Really, there's like there is loads of choice, isn't there? There is but... so much. It is. It is. I feel like it's a mini London. It is. Yeah. A lot smaller. People are nicer. Yeah. So like I said, I mean, I'm a huge fan of the show. We all are here at PLT, and you and Brad, you and Bradley are such an entertaining couple. <laughs> like honestly episode one I laughed my whole the whole way through it and then at the end I was like oh my god at the Blackpool I was nearly crying <laughs> it was like an emotional roller coaster. but what made you guys want to go or what made you sorry want to go on TV again and share this like intimate part of your life so for me I think when I came out of Love Island I did the show with Chris <laughs> I don't like to dwell on it but it did happen it's yeah. out there and obviously it was terrible. It was a, not a good time. We were at the end of our, obviously, yeah. of being together. It just didn't work out. Um, so I felt like I loved making the show, but it was the wrong person because we weren't right for each other. And it was the wrong time. And it kind of felt like, oh, I was like, I just was getting my teeth into making this show. And obviously just because the way it worked out, it ended like that. And then I always was speaking to the guys at ITV and was saying, I'd love to do another show. And and sort of let people back in and show me when I'm not crying, arguing with someone, because yeah. that's all that we did. And I said, I'm not actually like that. Like, I'm actually a happy person. And they always said, when the time's right, we'll definitely do something. And obviously, the years have gone by. I was like, been on TOWIE. And then I just think the kind of like, this, everything kind of just fell into place. I think with what I'm doing right now, like with, you know, being engaged and moving mm. up here. It was like quite a lot of big change. Yeah. I think we all disagreed. Okay, this would be a good time to start capturing some of this because like quite a lot's happening. Mm-hmm. And so it just fell together like that. And Brad, obviously, he plays football. He's got his job. He's got his thing. He's not interested in TV. <laughs> he's not interested in fame. He actually shies away from it. But I think for him, he knew that this was for me, like a real personal goal and like a real, and I think he'd seen me struggle a little bit with feeling a little bit misrepresented on different, on Mm. some other shows and a bit misunderstood. And I was like, I really wanna, I really, really wanna have a time to show people like, to let people in to like another side of me and just like from a kind of mental health as well, like as well as as it being a passion project and like a career goal, he got that and he was kind of like, look, you've supported me, you've moved your whole life to the other end of the country. It's a bit tight of me then to go, no. <laughs> so he's been really good. And it was it was definitely trial and error. We thought like, yeah, we could roll cameras on day one and he could just feel really uncomfortable and just mm-hmm. hate it. And I always said to him, my, my production would literally scream, but I said, look, if you hate it, you hate it. And we'll have to, we're gonna have to say to them, you hate yeah, it and yeah. we can't do it. Like, but he's been great. Like, I think we've got a great team. Mm-hmm. Hello. We've got a great in the room right now. Yeah, okay. <laughs> we've got a great crew who, you know, we've become like friends with. Yeah. So it's like he feels very comfortable and it's very like relaxed and yeah, he's eased into it. Like it's been great. And he comes across so well because I mean that was gonna be one of my questions. Like, how did you convince him? Because I know you did yeah. an IGTV with him on your Instagram. And Hates it was like it. I finally got Bradley on. And Hates you know, I, I did wonder whether yeah. he would actually Do you know have what? Okay I it. think he hates he hates since he hates the instagram he'd rather shoot for a day for our show my show than do something on my instagram wow. he's like as he finds the instagram thing really awkward i think like you said the crew are here now you kind of forget they're here 100%. so when we're at home doing stuff we ultimately after the first few days of filming we forget like so mm-hmm. when he comes in and we're just doing stuff they're rolling but he will definitely doesn't feel like he's on he's performing whereas i feel like when you're doing things to instagram story it is a little bit it like awkward you have to kind of like yeah. you, it is even i sometimes do an instagram story i think oh god that was that was <laughs> awkward um so yeah he just kind of eased into it and then just obviously respecting the fact that obviously you know he has his job football that mm. comes first mm. this is my job my world and we kind of get him where we can get him and some day the big days go past and we can't get him and mm. that's just 
you know, that's part of it. But but it's nice to see, like, you know, it is reality. We get to see you mm. and Bradley together. We get to see you and the girls, you know, off for lunch. You with your mum. I mean, I feel like everybody <laughs> is obsessed with your mum. How many fan accounts have popped up for your mum over this? Like, honestly. I can't she do. Need, she's going to end up with her own show after I know. this. That's what, the, that's what the guys at ITV said. They're like, everyone's obsessed with your mum. I was like, okay. Anything, and you. Anything and about you. me? 100% and you. <laughs> she's, no, she's, she's great. I feel like she's the UK's answer to Chris Jenner. She's yes. like, she, she's always been a little bit of a mum. <laughs> she's always like when she films with me and like I'm stressing out or about something she'll be like this is great content I'll be like okay Chris I'm like I'm just having a moment for myself here if that's all right <laughs> so she's amazing she's really great and she's been really supportive and on board Good. and yeah it's just I think it's just nice for people to see all these other sides of my life and see other people that make my life that people haven't had a chance to meet I'm definitely excited to see more like I can't wait to watch the next episode but I mean planning a wedding as hard as it is well I mm. imagine it is I've never had to do it myself yet <laughs> but I imagine it's pretty hard it's horrible <laughs> how is it going through that all on the tv screen as well it's it's full on it's not like everyone's like oh you know, I thought planning a wedding would be like so romantic and it's like oh thinking about a big day it's not <laughs> whoever sold that dream like is fully lying it's not romantic it's like it's full on I've got an amazing wedding planner so I'm very lucky and she's kind of like she does like the bulk of everything but we are just sort of um taking well we're full steam ahead but we are mm. very much aware that you know if we get the other side of christmas and yeah. we are still in a situation that we will have to obviously look at what we do there but fingers crossed yeah i mean it's it's exciting it is exciting it can feels you, very surreal can you tell us anything about what we could expect from the wedding you're keeping it all completely on lockdown on lockdown that's a good word right now isn't it <laughs> it's very like topical <laughs> i mean we are going to go for like a big wedding but not huge like we're going to have like I don't know, we keep going back and forth, like the 100, 120 number of like people, it sounds like 120 of our closest friends. It just sounds like so <laughs> stupid, but I'm not having like just someone that I met like once at a job. Yeah, Do you know what I mean? It's like, we're keeping it quite like tight and I want it to be big and I want it to be like impactful. I want it to be like, you know, beautiful and people to cry, but also classy, you know. I'm so excited. Yeah, well, I mean, who doesn't want everything from the wedding? It's such a huge part of your life. And I mean, especially for like a girl, I feel like we obviously go through, not everybody, I mean, but we go through life thinking about this kind of big day. I, I didn't, you say. I didn't, I I never thought I'd be getting married, like. How wild. I thought maybe like in my, like, I thought I'd be one of the people that did it later. I thought like maybe I'd have some, like have a kids and then get married like later in my thirties. Like I just didn't really see it. Like everything's kind of, I'd say everything since I've got, well, I never thought I'd get back together with Brad. So everything's yeah. kind of like, everything's taken me kind of by surprise. And I think that's what I always try and say to like, like young girls that follow me. I, when I was 25, I thought I was going to marry him and, you know, have kids and mm. everything. And then it's like, now it's like, I'm, you know, in my late twenties and I'm not interested in kids at all. It's like, you know, just don't try and plan out your next move. Cause yeah. it's like life just like catches you by surprise and things never work out. I think mm. the way you thought they were going to. But look Sometimes for the best. Look how amazingly it has worked out. That's the thing. So at that, at that time when you're 25, you probably think every, that's your whole world. Yeah. This relationship is my yeah. world. Like, I mean, we've all been there when we've yeah. felt like that, but like, look at uh, everything that's happened since then. I mean, it's been a journey. It's, amazing. <laughs> it's been a journey. And I mean, something you've also spoken about is kind of like the trust issues with Bradley mm. in the past. Do you think that you're completely past that now or is it something that you kind of still work on day to day? I think because we had like that kind of unconventional start and we, we we kind of hurt each other first time round it's he's definitely got there quicker than me with like mm. the full trust but i think men normally do yeah i think girls are always a little bit more like expecting the worst and yeah. you know and i think obviously i trust him you know i wouldn't be marrying someone i don't trust but i'm very like i'm a realist like human beings are flawed mm -hmm. and who's to say like i'm not saying like oh i think in five years he's gonna cheat on me or i'm gonna cheat on him mm. but it's really hard to sit here right now if i'm gonna be really honest and say that would never happen because you just don't know mm -hmm. like yeah. but i all i know is right now like he's the only person i want to be with and i trust him i love him and you know and i know you know the, the feelings mutual i hope and then <laughs> it's yeah it's and i think trust is something that's like one one it's earned and two yeah. it's like maintained mm -hmm. and you know he's earned my trust back and right now he's maintaining it and vice versa mm -hmm. and it's our job to continue maintaining each other's trust he could e e you know, easily break my trust next week by doing something yeah. as much as i could and it's just I think it's like trying to live in the moment That's and it. not be thinking, oh, but next year he could go 
for example, the stag do thing. It's like, I am being playful with a lot of that stuff. <laughs> no girl is gonna be like, oh, I can't wait for my boyfriend to go oh, on this stag 100%. do. Like, when he's saying he's having three, I'm like, but then ultimately, <laughs> like, he's not probably going to be, like, jumping with joy, like, you know, when I get mm. on a plane to Vegas. Exactly. So it's like, but I just, you know, I'm more vocal. He mm-hmm. wouldn't speak the way I do. But it's like a little bit of sarcasm with a little bit of truth. It's a little bit of both. <laughs> it's work. Like, it's not, like a relationship isn't all no. just, you know, it's not always easy. And you've got, you've got to work on it, I guess. But 100%. I mean, you seem so happy. And I can't wait to see kind of like how your new TV show unfolds and like just learn more about you and Bradley because I feel like everybody is so invested in you guys right now. So it's really exciting to see where all this goes and what happens with the wedding. I can't it's wait. really nice because I think because no one's seen us together. Exactly. So I think that was what was so nice for the viewers. And the response like has been, I'm just, I was honestly on cloud nine for like two days. I was like floating. Cause I was like, just to, it, so much goes into it. Mm-hmm. And obviously it's even been harder with all the restrictions to get filming even physically off the ground. Yeah. So then to make something that, like you say, like I love the fact that people went on like a bit of a journey through the episode, you were laughing, 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 then mm. it was kind of deep because yeah. that's us. It's like, we are full on banter, ripping each other to bits. <laughs> Me just moaning, moaning, moaning. <laughs> and then we also, obviously we can be soppy and soft and it's like, it's nice to have that like balance and everyone needs a laugh right now, do you know what I mean? We all need to, and it definitely gave us that. Oh, well, live congratulations, honestly. Thank you so it's much. such an incredible show and I can't wait to watch more. And I know that everybody watching, listening, it'll be the same, following following the show and supporting you all the way as well. Thank you. And thank you for coming on PLT Behind Closed Doors. It's been a journey. Thank you for having me. I feel like I should be paying you for this therapy session. Like, I feel so much lighter. <laughs> oh my God, I'm so glad. Honestly, I've loved it. I, you know, I loved getting to know you. It's, it's really great hearing everything firsthand from you and just kind of, yeah, being here, even with everything going on, it's so lovely to have some new human interaction. I know. <laughs> but thank you so much. And thank to you. everybody watching at home, thank you. This has been PLT Behind Closed Doors with Olivia Atwood. Thanks, guys. Woo!